Hey everyone, uh, just a real quick sort of 10 minute video that I kind of threw together. Um, I've had these motherboards kind of kicking around for a little while now. The one on the left came in a pile of other parts that I was uh, given and the one on the right I ended up buying from uh, someone in New Zealand. The one on the left is an AOPEN AP55CS. The Retro uh, Web has this um, noted down as a Socket 5 uh, system, but this is a Socket 7 one. Um, exactly the same layout and chipset used, so I can only assume there was a couple of different revisions. Uh, but this is a very early Pentium uh, Socket uh, 7 motherboard. I'm pretty sure this would have been some sort of OEM type uh, motherboard. I don't know if it works, but we're going to try it out. Um, it has a SOS chipset, 5511, uh, dated around 95, the BIOS revisions around 94, so very early Pentium. I don't believe this supports the MMX series of CPUs with the dual voltage, um, although I, I did shove one in there, so who knows, um, documentation is pretty sparse. But yeah, it has an onboard VGA header, which has some sort of onboard SOS uh, video. And the second motherboard is a Jetway J-53-1CF, uses another SIS chipset. This is a Super Socket 7 motherboard, um, sadly no VGA, which is a little bit uh, annoying, but at least it has a ISA uh, card, so, well, ISA slot, 16-bit. It's very dirty, I did try and brush it down. It's got a couple of swollen capacitors that you can see here above the CPU socket. Those suckers will need to be changed at some point. But yeah, another socket 7 machine. I don't have any motherboards that um, support um, the K6 series of um, CPUs. So this one seems to support it, although not officially on the documentation. So maybe a BIOS update will sort that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start um, by checking that there's no major shorts on the motherboard and you can do that by just using a multimeter going through the various rails I just find it easier just to plug the AT header in for the power connector and just work my way along um, but yeah so far so good no, no issues there's no tantalum capacitors on here but you know this was kind of all thrown uh, in a box so a heap of other stuff so you never really know there's also a good chance to try out some dodgy memory that i had lying around as well that I don't know if it works or not so yeah um i am putting a mmx uh, cpu in here because that's the only one i had on hand it's 166 megahertz uh, it's the fastest pentium apparently officially supported by the board's documentation and of course i always get the uh first slot backwards it's always the first one at the bottom nice plastic sim holders for the memory um, you wouldn't want to push modules in and out of these too many times because they look uh, old and brittle like all of this stuff so we're going to do a power on test and um, yeah see what happens we are getting postcodes but I'm not getting any fan spin from the CPU fan I have a feeling this motherboard does have a um, fault with that Although it is outputting 12 volts, maybe it's not outputting enough current or amps to spin the fan. I tried with a few different heat sinks as well. Well the machine does post and here's the SIS integrated chipset for the video. Now we've got 4 megabytes of memory and just ignore the cutoff text but yeah real nice fancy uh, GUI style BIOS from the early days of like the 486 or the very late sort of 486 era. There's a 1994 uh, BIOS date up there. Um, so yeah this must be a very early uh, Pentium. Uh, socket 7 motherboard instead of a socket 5 so I guess that's why the documentation all states a um, socket 5 so yeah kind of interesting and also I like the fact it's got an onboard um, video header but yeah 1996 up the top there as well so kind of a mixture of dates from 94 to 96 so yeah 256 kilobytes of uh, cache on board 
um, that's soldered to the motherboard and for some reason the CPU speed is 120 megahertz likely because I got the jumpers wrong um, there's no documentation so yeah the machine's powered up but yeah you can see the fans not spinning even though it is outputting 12 volts so not too sure what's going there I tried swapping the polarity with a header extension but no luck all right moving on to the jetway motherboard this is the super socket 7 one a bit more modern with the atx style um power connector here but yeah i'm just going to go through uh, same as what i did on the a open motherboard and we're just going to check to make sure there's no uh, major shorts or anything like that which there wasn't which is always good uh, this one as i said does have a few faulty capacitors but before recapping the motherboard it's you know it's always good just to see does it actually power up um, is it going to be worth your time to you know spend an hour or so to recap the motherboard get the parts uh, it's always a bit of a gamble so if possible I always like to make sure that it you know passed a, a post test or something you know just before dumping a bunch of time in there I've been burned before Thankfully no fan issues with this motherboard, so I'm just going to use the same CPU as I did on the previous motherboard. I'm just going to plop it in, and um, this takes SD RAM as well, so I had some of that kicking around. Um, I found this nice um, Cooler Master uh, Socket 370, Socket 7, probably Socket A compatible uh, heatsink as well um, with the AMD one that I previously found. I got them from the same place. And of course I have to use the um, diagnostic card as well to see if we're getting any dodgy postcodes. Um, but yeah, I've got a fair bit of this um, SD RAM just lying around in the lower capacity stuff, which is um, kind of ideal for a system like this because it would be running, you know, Windows 95 or 98, so 128 megabytes will be just fine, especially because we can't run any AGP um, video cards, so it's not like you're going to be playing real intense games on this so yeah it's got a lot of onboard um io anyway so i suspect a lot of the stuff's going to be integrated there's onboard sound vga stuff like that so yeah makes it quite handy Just a little quick power on test as well. Um, I did a few of them just to make sure, but I'm always worried that that dodgy capacitor is just going to explode in my face because when they tend to explode, they can make a bit of a uh, loud bang. Uh, I've had tantalums and I've also had the polarity back to front on electrolytics before and they, uh, they're very loud when they uh, explode. But yeah, by the state of year 2000 here, um, our Pentium MMX CPU is detected, 166 megahertz. I didn't want to risk trying my nice fast Athlon, oh, sorry not Athlon, AMD CPU um, just because the capacitors on the board I didn't want it to get fried so I sacrificed a pretty run of the mill CPU at least in terms of speed. But yeah, that's pretty much about it for this video. I really just had these motherboards lying around and uh, needed a little bit of, bit of a break from that NT4 stuff. So yeah, I decided to crack into some of these and see if they actually work. So upcoming projects and parts for sure. Anyway, guys, I'll leave you to it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, catch you guys soon.